Blessed good morning, my dear viewers. In the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, welcome to another episode of Moments of Inspiration. I am student minister Peter Arjun, attached to the penal pastoral region of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. Sharing in our program this morning are the very talented members of the Penal Rock Presbyterian Church and Reverend Kelvin Sukansing of the Oropuch Pastoral Region will proclaim God's word. In today's episode, we will be continuing our series on the Sermon on the Mount. This is an ideal time as Lent approaches and as we journey with Christ to the cross to really reflect on the way we live our lives and where we are in our relationship with God. So join me in prayer as we pray together. God of grace and mercy and love, you have called us this morning and by faith we have answered that call to be here in glorious worship to you. For you are our God who is with us. You are our God who heals, who understands us, who cares for us and loves us with a love that is unconditional. Hear us now, O God, as we pray to the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that from him and through him and for him are all things. Amen. I now invite the members of the Penal Rock Presbyterian Church to share with us in song. We now listen to God's word taken from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 to 18. 
And reading from the New Revised Standard Version says, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen.
the key. It is the master key that unlocks or opens the door to God's blessing. Prayer, according to Merriam Webster's dictionary, is a silent or spoken petition made to God. Another writer refers to it as a spiritual communion with God or an object of worship as in supplication, thanksgiving, or adoration. It is simply a two-way communication between God and humankind. In Matthew 6, verses 5 to 8, Jesus gave two examples of how not to pray to God. Firstly, he says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray in the synagogue and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. Some people, especially the religious leaders of the day, wanted to be seen as righteous or holy, and public prayer was the way to get Attention, Jesus saw through their self-righteous acts and he taught the essence of prayer. It's not public style, but private communication with God. There is a place for public prayers, but to pray for others to notice you indicates that your real audience is not God, but people. And you will receive your reward, not from God, but from others. Jesus refers to people who pray in this way as hypocrites. The word hypocrite means one who acts out a rule. Someone who says one thing and does another. He or she utters words, but do not believe these in his or her heart. The Pharisees prayed three times a day. But when it was this time to pray, they chose to stand up and pray in a place where there were many people. They wanted to be seen and heard by others. They practiced their piety before men for applause. They were performing and not actually praying. Jesus wants us to know that God is not only looking at the outside actions, but also the inside attitudes of man and woman. In Luke 18, verses 9 to 12, Jesus gave an example of this. He said, two men went to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a publican, a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, or even like this tax collector here. I fast twice a week. I give one-tenth of all I get. He spoke loudly. The tax collector, on the other hand, stood at a distance. He did not even look up to heaven, but smote his chest and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The disciples 
was shocked to hear Jesus say that the tax collector went home justified before God. The Pharisee was performing for an audience. But the tax collector was desperate for deliverance and he prayed to an audience of one almighty God. Not only did Jesus tell them how not to pray, but he told them how to pray. Not only did Jesus tell them how not to pray, but he told them how to pray. He said, when you pray, go to your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is in heaven. Then your Father who sees what is done will reward you. The reward from God is sweeter than the applause of man. Secondly, Jesus told his hearers, when you pray, do not repeat empty phrases like the Gentiles who think God will hear because of their many words. It is not wrong to come to God with the same request. But Jesus condemns the shallow repetition of words that are not offered with sincere hearts. He assures them that God the Father knows what we need even before we ask for it. We do not pray to give God any new information. We pray as children to our Father. Prayer keeps our hearts tuned to God. Prayer changes us and aligns us with God's will. Prayer is the expression of our total dependence on God for everything. Then, Jesus gave a pattern of how he wants us to pray. He gave a model prayer called the Lord's Prayer. We start by praising God. We pray for his work on earth, for our daily needs, for forgiveness of our sins as we forgive others. We pray for help in times of struggles and temptations and deliverance from evil. This is the way he wants us to pray. The other act of righteousness that Jesus expressed concern about was fasting. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 18, he tells how not to fast. He says, when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. Fasting refers to abstinence from some or all foods, including liquids. It is the act of denying one's self for the pleasures of food for a specified period. However, the principle of fasting can also apply to other daily activities in our lives, such as the internet, watching television, sexual relations, etc. It gives us time to pray. It teaches us self-discipline. It reminds us that we can live with less and helps us to appreciate God's gift. In the Old Testament, fasting was a common practice. The children of Israel were always aware of the benefits of fasting and prayer to God. Each time they fasted and prayed, they saw the awesome move of God in their circumstances as individuals and as a nation. Once, when they were in battle with their enemy, they were constantly losing until they fasted and prayed. God gave them victory. The Pharisees fasted voluntarily twice a week to show others that they were holy and righteous. 
Jesus commended acts of sacrifice done quietly and sincerely. He wanted his believers to adopt spiritual discipline for the right reasons. He does not condemn fasting itself, but the hypocrisy of fasting to gain public approval. Jesus instructed them how to fast. He said, when you fast, go about your regular routine. Do not make a show that you are fasting. He continued, when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Let us remember that when we fast and pray, it is essential that we do it for the right reason. Jesus sees the heart of man and knows when our motives and intentions are wrong. As we cope with the new strains of the COVID-19 virus, Jesus calls us to pray and fast genuinely as a church, the community, a nation, and allow God to reward us with victory over the pandemic and other challenges. This week, we enter the season of Lent. On Wednesday, we celebrate Ash Wednesday. This season is a period of prayer and fasting. Let us pray and fast in the way Jesus taught us so that our spiritual lives will be strengthened and we can follow him faithfully. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all our desires are known, and from whom none of our secrets can hide, we thank you for your word today. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, and hear the cries of the people of this land. Those who are frustrated and discouraged, those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their jobs, open doors of opportunities for your people, O oh God. We pray for this nation of Trinidad and Tobago. Help us in this time of COVID-19 to have consideration for others. Help us, Lord, to follow the normals and guidelines to prevent the spread of the virus. Bless our leaders, all those in authority over us. Help them to make wise decisions. As we begin the season of Lent, help us to draw closer and nearer to you. Bless our nation. Bless our church. Bless our homes. Bless our people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. 
to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you thank you very much Pinal Rock Presbyterian Church Group Neil Forgeny Christopher and Aidan Budrang your song and music has truly inspired and enhanced our worship experience this morning. May you continue to share with others God's message through music and song. We also wish to say a special thank you to our sponsor, MISPA Signature Events, for our set of design here at Moments of Inspiration. I leave you now with today's Moment of Inspiration. As we begin Lent, let us pray and fast in a way that is pleasing to God. Thank you.